Hey everyone, how are you doing? My name is Fina Chichi and I am a parenting educator, consultant and a coach and also a coach for teens. Um, I couldn't help but come on to share seven key principles that I have picked up from Coco's Win um, recently. It's been amazing. The first thing that I saw was the relationship she had. So that was what I shared on, I shared it on Instagram, on Facebook that I said they won in their parent-child relationship first before Coco won the US Open. So today I want to just share seven great principles that I've picked up um, from her win, from the things I've kind of um, learned about her and her family um, since the win. And I thought I would share this for all families, all parents, all young people, um, 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 to kind of know this. So I'm, I'm super excited. Okay. So number one I wrote here was the relationship. The relationship was very evident. And one thing about relationship, there's a quote that says communication is the life blood or the bloodline of any relationship. Communication. So for a, for a relationship to thrive, for a parent child relationship to thrive, communication has got to be very respectful. If their communication were not respectful between each other, then relationship will not, it will not be as strong or as, as healthy as it is. So communication is key. And for me, when I think about communication, I think about life and death words, you know, like as, as the Bible says, speak life. I, I think about criticisms as part of those dead words. I think about comparisons as part of those dead words. And I think about affirmations, um, recalling what they've done well, um, correcting them with respect. I think about that with speaking life to our children. And so the more we speak life to our children, the healthier their self-esteem is. They believe more in what they're able to do. So for me, that was what I saw. Number one was their relationship. And I connected relationship with communication because if there was bad communication, if there was communication of just criticizing, shouting, yelling, then we won't see that dynamics will be different this time around. It will be different. So relationship was definitely number one for me. The second that I picked up from the second point I picked up is that the parents saw her potentials. And so I was watching another video on YouTube where um, they were sharing that um, the father, the father and mom, actually, they, they, they've actually played, they've done, they've been in the sports arena. The father is a former um, college basketball player. Um, the mom is a former track and field athlete turned educator. So they've got sports. They, they, they know the, they know the drill with sports. They were really encouraging her to play basketball or or to run track, you know, to, to, to go to run track. But she was more interested in tennis. And guess what? It says here, the dad saw her potentials in tennis. And then they started to pursue that and invested into that. He gave up his job to coach her. Uh, mom gave up her job as an educator to homeschool her. So they saw the potential. Every child of ours has potentials. Do we see the potentials? And what do we do about the potentials? So that's really, really the key in that. So they saw the potentials is my number two, second point. The third point is they were qualified in their own rights. I kind of just mentioned that a bit now when I talked about they saw their potentials because they, they, they had been in the sports arena. They had been in the sports field. So they were qualified in their own rights um, uh, and knew about the sports. And then even if they didn't know about the sports, I'm sure they kind of learned more about tennis itself because he was basketball. She was an athlete, you know, a track athlete. So they would have had to learn the game for them to kind of be in the game, to help her with, you know, to help her with the game. So it just goes to show you the dedication. I think for me, that's the the biggest key. And I've watched so many videos with her as a young person, dad is taking her to the court. She even mentioned it on the, on her interview. She said her dad took her to the court. And do you know something here? Memories, <laughs> the things we do every day with our children, the words we share to our children, these are things that they remember so that when they're on the big platforms, on the big arenas out there, that's what they're going to recall. So I recall my dad taking me to the tennis courts. 
if he was grumbling about it, oh, I have to take you this, oh, I need to do this, but I need, if he was grumbling all about it, that won't be a good memory that she'll be talking about now. So yeah, that was my that was my third point. They were qualified and of course they learned more about the game and supported her the best way they could. And I know that later on down the line, she did get another coach. Again, that's probably actually should be my number four point where yes, the dad knew that he will help her to a certain point, but knew when it was time to get somebody else to come on board. And I'm sure the dad was still was still there all through, but they had another second eye, a second person to come and actually take her to the next level. And for me, that showed me that the mom and dad were not, um, they were not selfish. They were, they were open. They wanted the bigger level for their, their, their kid. So anything that could take their dad, their kid to the next level, they were up for it. And that's really key for us to know, because sometimes parents think that getting the extra help makes them feel um, insecure, makes them feel like they don't know what they're doing. But that's not the case. Sometimes you can only do so much. You need somebody else, a coach in some kind of capacity to take your child's thinking to the next level. Because sometimes children, because we're with them 24-7, there's so much they will hear from us. But when somebody else comes to the table and says even something similar to what we said, our kids will take it on board because they've had our foundation of those words. And then somebody else has come to confirm those words and they'll run with it. So that is really, really key. The parents knew when it was time to bring on another coach that will help um, Coco go to the next level. So that's really, really important. Okay. Number five for me was the sibling relationship. Oh, whoo. Okay. So the first person or the first people that she called when she just won that thing, right there on the courts before they had even called her to come and get the, the trophy, she called her brothers. Of course, they didn't hear their phones because there was another video where they were just screaming and shouting the house down from her win. But she called her brothers. And then after that call, she called her grandma. And I just thought and thought, wow, the more, the parents have done such a great job nurturing the sibling relationship. And I talk about sibling relationship a lot because it's really key to the self-esteem of every child. When children that have siblings, when the relationship of siblings are close, it really, really helps each of the children. And so for me, that was a great point. And again, I directed it again towards the parents. The parents must have done intentionally, did something right to nurture that relationship. And I have another video that I'm going to share about the do's and don'ts of nurturing sibling relationship. So for me, that's what I saw. One of the do's is one of the do's is to bring them together as a team, talk to them as a team, affirm them as a team, compliment them as a team. Oh, what would I do without you guys? You guys are my world. Speak to them as a team. One thing we shouldn't do, don't criticize one child in front of another child. Or when, when I say that is, or don't even talk about one child behind the back of another child. These are things that can be quite common in some families and actually ends up causing a lot of sibling rivalry between the kids. So sibling relationship was another point that I picked up here. Okay, all right, number six, um, because I've added one more. So number six is, I saw another video where, um, this is to do with visualization. So she had a photo of Serena in her room, on, her, on, on the wall in her room. And that takes, you know, a child has a dream and they have that visual visualization out there. They have that vision out there. And so, of course, every morning she sees that photo. Like when I look at my vision board and I'm seeing these things, she, every morning she did that. And that would have kept on registering more with her and gave her that self-determination that she had. So visualization is very key. Exposure is very key. So I encourage parents to expose your children to those arenas that those ch your children are interested in. Sometimes you may not even understand it. I didn't understand my, my son's um, hammer throw game, but I supported him with that, even though I didn't understand it. So that's really, really key in all of this. Okay, what other point? So that's the visualization. Um, uh, da -da -dum, what do I have here? Number seven, strive for, strive for a healthy relationship that is not trauma-loaded. 
strive for a healthy relationship that is not trauma loaded. And it's really, really key because our words really matter. And I don't know her parents, but from what I've seen, I've seen that her parents spoke into her life. Her parents supported her. Her parents were respectful to her. I saw um, the interview she had on today, on the Today Show, and they were talking about her fruits. You know, she had this, she was eating this, uh, she was having some fruits during a break in uh, one of the matches before before this. Uh, before this. And so people were kind of saying, oh, so you your parents still make you pack lunch and stuff like that. And she said, yes, you know, her mom makes her those fruits, uh, fruits, almost like fruit salad. And then sometimes her dad does that as well. And I was thinking, wow, this just goes to show what I saw even just on the win that day she, she won. When she was now saying how her mom makes her some of the fruits and then her dad makes, makes some of those fruits for her sometimes when she goes and match. And I just thought, wow, this is what you call support. And this is not about, oh, I'm this, I'm, I'm the dad, or I don't need to do this. This is full team support, mom and dad supporting their daughter. And I'm sure they support their sons as well as that as well. It's a family thing. So beautiful, beautiful thing that I, I, I saw there. Number seven, I've got here values. And for me, there was, a, again, in that interview in the Today Show, they asked mom and they said, what is it about Coco? What was it about Coco? And she said something. She said Coco was self-determined, dedicated, and gifted as a child. And for me, hearing those words, self-dedication, self-discipline, and dedication, those are values. So they noticed that about their child, and they nurtured it some more. So speaking of values was so important. There was even another part, another video I saw, where just before the match, she prayed. She actually knelt down. She didn't sit down to pray. She actually got off her seat, knelt down, and prayed. So it goes to show you that the family are aware and conscious of values. And they teach that to their children and practice that with their children. And that makes a big difference in the life of children. It makes a big difference in the lives of teenagers. So for me, values, speaking about values, exemplifying values, all those things are key. The mom was her, uh, uh, homeschooled her. So, of course, the mom would have been exemplifying self-discipline as well, organization, you know, planning ahead of time for the subjects and the things they're going to go through. So these are the kind of things that when you see, you see, wow, the parents exemplify these values. And that's how children thrive. When parents exemplify these values, children tend to thrive. thrive. Okay. All right. That was number, was that my number seven? Yeah, that was number seven. That was number seven. Yeah. So those are the points that I had to share. You can see that I'm excited about this. But I think in all, the lessons for me from Coco's win of the US Open is that the parent-child relationship is vital. And I encourage parents, don't leave the relationship just to the moms. This is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm encouraging dads, get involved please, no matter what, in that relationship. Don't leave relationship building and relationship nurturing to moms alone. Get involved. And I'm sure that there will be certain times, because, you know, Coco's 19, I'm sure there will be times that the parents will tell her to do something and she won't want to do it. It's typical teenager stuff. But are they going to ruin the relationship because of that? There may be chores in the house that they wanted her to do that she may not want to do in that moment, or she may delay like normal teenagers delay. The key question is, what would our reactions be well, as parents in those moments? Relationship, always prioritize your relationship over rules. Always, please. Because a lot of times the relationship is damaged and ruined because of rules. Oh, your child didn't do something so quickly. So you then got very angry with her, insulted her, or insulted him, said all the words, unfiltered words to them, ruined the relationship without even realizing it. Your relationship, the parent-child relationship is key. Because with a healthy parent-child relationship, your children are guaranteed to thrive. Honestly, they're guaranteed to thrive. So keep on nurturing them. Even in situations where they don't do what you said, they delay in what you told them to do, please have the cap on. My parent, the parent-child relationship in this situation. 
the parent-child relationship. Just always have the relationship in your mind, no matter what. All our children are for signs and wonders. All our children are going to thrive and make impact in this world. And we can be part of it when we focus more on relationship over rules. When we focus more on the connections we have with them. And we, when we focus more on the words, <laughs> communication, the communication, the words that we, we share to them. Very, very important. And if you have situations where you get upset, you get frustrated about something, that's fine. But please choose not to talk to them in those moments. Choose the right time so that your words can go in, so that your words can be reflected on, and so that you can see the transformation that you dream of. So that's what I thought I would share about Coco's win. It was, for me, the first thing I saw was the family. The first thing I saw was the parent-child relationship. So I thought I would share that with all of us um, today. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and press the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel where I share lots of, lots of great information for parents, for dads, for teenagers, and for, for everything else that I, I do, which is mostly to do with the family, family connection. So Till the next video, I will talk to you later. <laughs> Don't mind my on and off stuff, but that's that's just me. Um, that's just me. Um, I, I'm really uh, appreciative of you stopping by to watch this video. Take care of yourself. And remember, I'm rooting for you all the way. Take care. God bless.